On September 21, 1972, Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law. I have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the President by the Constitution of the Philippines. It was probably the worst time for Philippine television and the scariest moment on TV. Media were cited as a prime enemy of the administration and the target of Marcos' forces. The first letter of instruction given by Marcos ordered the takeover of all media firms to prevent communist propaganda. When martial law was declared, only one thing happened. All the TV channels were closed down and all the radio stations were closed down and all the newspapers were closed down except the ones that Marcos controlled. Of the seven Manila-based stations existing in 1972, Marcos closed all but three. Channels 9 and 13 were eventually controlled by then-ambassador Roberto Benedicto. ABS-CBN was seized from the Lopez family and Eugenio Lopez Jr., then president of ABS-CBN, was imprisoned. Soon, Benedictus people took over the ABS-CBN studios in Bahal Avenue, Quezon City. His employees moved in and by August 1973, KBS was broadcasting on all ABS-CBN channels. A year later, KBS General Manager Salvador Buddy Tan reopened Channel 2 as the Banaho Broadcasting Corporation. One TV spectacular after another proclaimed that all was well in the Philippines. The 1974 Miss Universe pageant, the 1975 Muhammad Ali Joe Frazier heavyweight fight, and the 1981 visit of Pope John Paul II. When Benigno Aquino was assassinated in 1983, it was a small item on TV news. During his funeral procession, GMA 7 gave 10 seconds of airtime for this event. With the assassination of Aquino, the iron grip that the Marcus administration had on television began to slip. Suddenly, we had Edson, and there were five satellite transmissions going out from the Manila Hotel over which he had no control. And everybody was watching Edsa, New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Buenos Aires, Paris, London. So after four days, Reagan said, boy, you've had it. Go out and get into that helicopter. So he did. On February 24, 1986, MBS 4 went off the air during a live news conference in Milacanang. The network was eventually taken over by rebel forces. J. Calmeda Lopez, former general manager of ABS-CBN, took over the station and controlled the MBS engineers to put it back on the air. One by one, political figures trooped to the station to say a few words on cam. When the time came, it was television that first broke the news to the Filipino nation. Freedom was back. The military revolt backed by civilians ended a 20-year reign of dictatorship. It led to the restoration of the country's democratic institutions, including the TV stations. Eugenio Lopez Jr. returned from exile in the United States. ABS-CBN made a comeback and resumed broadcasting after 14 years of forced leave. RPN9 and IBC13 were sequestered by the government. To date, RPN9 remains as a government-owned and operated station. ABC5 is able to return to the television front and bills itself as the fastest-growing network. GMA7 remains as one of the top stations in the land. Two years after the historic EDSA revolution, Channel 4 was launched as the People's Station or PTV4. Television in the Philippines has indeed gone a long way. More than 40 years ago, it was just one of the appliances in a Filipino home. Today, it's considered as the most pervasive and the most influential mass medium in the Philippines. <laughs>